Good morning, Church of the Lakes. How are y'all doing? Let's stand and let's worship. God, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. Your holy name, God, you are bigger than any situation that we may face. So, God, we declare that you will never leave us and will never forsake us. So we make this declaration this morning that you are great, you are mighty, you are strong.
mighty cross.
church. Anybody grateful for the cross this morning? Come on, you do better than that. Anybody grateful for the cross this morning? Thank you, Jesus. We're going to take a moment and enjoy communion together. So if you'll have a seat for just a second, and uh, hopefully you grabbed a, a communion cup up there. If you did not, I'm sure we can grab some and, and help you with that. But I don't want to take too long as we um, go through communion here. But I was I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, you know, we, we do this ceremony. We do it pretty often. Um, you know, here at church, we do it once a month. You may come from traditions that do it every week or at special occasions or those kind of things. But I was thinking through the whole, you know, concept that when Jesus did this, he said, remember me and remember me and remember me and, and his rem the reminder to us of how for forgetful we are. Is anybody else as forgetful as I am? Um, you know, I walk out of church ready to charge hell with a water pistol and five minutes later, I'm yelling at somebody in the left lane. Come on, right? Like we're, we're forgetful of what Jesus did for us. We're forgetful of the cross. We're forgetful of his great love for us and the love that we're to turn around and, and, and show to everyone else. And so what we do here symbolically is we take the bread and, 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 and we remember his body that was broken. Um, and that was supposed to be me and that was supposed to be you, right? And we just take a minute to still ourselves in the craziness and the agendas and Honey-do list, anybody else got a honey-do list a mile long? Just for a moment, close your eyes for a sec. And just hear these words. Jesus loves you so much. Yeah, I, I, I know what you did last week, last night. <laughs> he saw all that, he knows that. He still loves you. Matter of fact, he's, he's just focused on what he has and the purposes for your life. And I think he'd want you to hear this morning, I died on that cross and while that was 2000 years ago, it's as strong today, the passion and love that I have for you as it was when I suffered what I suffered on that cross for you today. And so would you hear today that you're loved, that you have a God who's very personal and very real and wants to walk through this life with you today and that's what we remember. We remember that because of him, we have true life. Amen. So if you would take that little wafer, I know that cup's a little awkward, but if you'll take the little wafer out and again, nothing spectacular about this wafer bread or anything else. What we really believe it's symbolic, that it's something for us to simply remember how much you are loved. And, and so I, I really, I just want to harp there for a second. Because if we're all honest, most of us look in the mirror and go, oh, what happened? Right? Especially the older we get. Um, we look back on our life and we go, wow, what, what happened? And I had this dream and I had this thought and I had this. And so many of us come, we do a great job. We walk into church and put our mask on and say, woo, God is so good. You were screaming at your spouse on the way here. Right? Because... We've got these struggles. That's what we're gonna talk about for the next four weeks. We're gonna talk about struggles and overcoming. Anybody wanna overcome? Anybody wanna get out of a cycle of a, something you keep going through and through and through in your life? That's what we're gonna talk about for the next. And so I want you to, to, to recognize, what are we remembering? We're remembering as we eat this bread and his broken body, it gives us the opportunity to have life, to get out of the cycles, to overcome. That's what this is all about. So as you receive that, as you eat the bread, would you remember? that he gave his body to sacrifice for you that you might have life. Would you receive the bread together? And then if you open that little cup and it's, uh, it's just some simple juice in there, but it's symbolic of his blood and blood is our life. Like that's the lifeline. And uh, what Jesus wants to do, what the Holy Spirit would love to do today is to give you an infusion right? Is, is to take some of the blood that he sacrificed, that it is his blood, the blood of life that covers all of our sins and all the things that we've done and to put that into you that you might live life today. So when we take, the reason we, we do it this way symbolically is we take it in, it becomes part of us. One thing to know about the opportunity, it's another thing to take part and ingest it. Does that make sense? And so as we drink that cup today, I want you to realize it's the cup of life. 
Like I'm drinking this because it's not just a symbolic thing, but it's also the reality that I'm saying, I accept that you have something more. You have life for me. You have a new covenant for me. You have something more that that is meant for my life. And so we remember that today. We remember your sacrifice, but we remember the opportunity of the new covenant and new life today. So would you drink the cup today and remember the life that Jesus gave as he died on the cross for you. So thank you, God. As we took a moment to think of your mighty cross, how grateful we are today. Forgive us, God, for our frailty, our humanity, where we just so quickly forget, we so quickly get off course. And so today, Holy Spirit, would you reframe our thinking to understand the relationship we have you with you and the opportunities we have in relationship with you. So Father, we, we thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. We're gonna sing a song called Run to the Father. Will you do that now that you remember what he's done for you? Just stand and let's worship.
God, we love you. We thank you. God, we just, we run to you. Where else can we go but into the safety of your arms? So God, your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So God, we stand on that promise this morning. God, everything we have is yours. God, you live inside of us. So God, we take our rightful place as your sons and your daughters. So God, meet us here. So God, we come with expectation that every situation that we deal with is already handled because we are a child of God. So God, we love you, we thank you, and we bless your holy name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Church of the Lakes, we are so excited that you are here. We're about to go into a time of meet and greet. So find somebody with your band, red, yellow, green, and love on them this morning. Well, good morning again, everybody. Everybody doing good this morning? Man, it's good to see you in church. You look fantastic this morning. If you did not get a guide, then if you'd raise your hand, we've got guides here. They'll be happy to bring you one. Got sermon notes in there for you guys, so grab one of those. And if you're a first-time guest, let me say welcome, welcome. We are so glad you that you chose to worship at Church of the Lakes this morning. I realize you drove past probably 20 other churches, depending on how far you came from. And so I take very seriously the reality that you chose to come worship with us this morning. We're grateful for that. So thank you for spending time with us. We have the most diverse church um, of backgrounds. It's pretty amazing. Uh, some of you guys know I grew up in the Episcopal Church, which is like Protestant Catholic. So that's my background. And we have so many different people. But what I love is, is uh, for those of you here who were last week, we saw people from all different backgrounds come and celebrate together. Um, and it was just a great week. And it just reminded me what God is doing here. And so if you're a first time guest, we probably do things really different from places you've been before. And let me say, welcome. Uh, we're really glad that you came to try it out. And if you'd let us know you were here, we would love that. Uh, on the connection card that's inside the guide, there's a little card where you can say, here's my name, email, phone number, and I'm a first time guest. Or if you're kind of being careful with the social distancing, you can go on our website, which is COT, as in Church of the, cotlakes.com, and there's an e-guide. So it's got sermon notes, you can fill out the first time guest, all of that uh, right on your phone. So if you do that, we would really appreciate it. Another thing we do that some people find very weird or different just because you have a different background is, we don't pass a bucket or a plate, depending on what your background is. Instead, we have boxes in the back of the room, and that's where you put your tithes and offerings. So on your way out, uh, there are little envelopes side in the side of those boxes. So uh, when you go to do your giving, you can do that that way. Uh, we honestly want to spend more time focusing towards God, and we just don't, we, we figure we can do that, and you can give to God in the way that he tells you to give. So, uh, so if you'll do that, we would really appreciate it. Only one announcement I want to accent this week, and that is we've got marriage night coming up. All of our couples, 
We've got marriage night scheduled coming up in, in just a few weeks, so you wanna get signed up for that, get on the website and check it out. We've got, it's one night dinner, some, some teaching opportunity for you to invest in your marriage, and it's 50 bucks for a couple. So, I mean, that's a date night. Uh, so let me really, 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 really encourage you, gentlemen, let me help you here for just a moment. Men, pay attention to me. If you would sign up and you would pay, it might go real well for you. That's all I'm going to say. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm just kind of putting that one out there. This is not a marriage series, this, but that might help you. So just letting you know now, uh, you might want to do that. But join us for marriage night. It's going to be going to be really, really good. Let's jump in. Starting a new series today called Hashtag Struggles. Anybody had a bad day? lately. Anybody had a bad day recently? Uh, any kind of struggles going on? I mean, like, that's, that's pretty much universal. Uh, I, I was thinking that, you know, life seems to throw at us all kinds of really interesting struggles, doesn't it? Like, just sometimes things come out of nowhere, and you're like, what the heck? I thought I had seen it all, you know, and where is this coming from? You know, or you're your spouse walks in and some demon possessed them or something. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like, where did that come from? Why did they say that? Where did those words come from? And, and here's what I want to say to you this morning. Everyone you're sitting right next to right now is either in a struggle, in between struggles, or headed into a struggle. Right? And you're like, thank you, Pastor Mike. So happy I came to church this morning. Thank you for that great encouragement. That's wonderful. Could you be a little more positive? Yes. I'm positive that you are in a struggle, between struggles, or heading into a struggle. Come on, somebody. This is just life, right? This is, this is the reality of life that we all need to kind of understand. Uh, because of the sinful nature that we carry, and because of the curse on the earth that happened in the fall, um, this life is just... Struggle recovery, struggle recovery, struggle recovery, if we're honest. And, and actually, I think God meant for it to be that way. Right? Like, we all have in this mindset the white picket fence, right? Trying to create the perfect little scenario and all that. And how, do you, how many of you guys know the white picket fence gets dirty? Like, you got to pressure wash that stupid thing every once in a while. Right? Like, like the perfect little scenario, that brand new flooring, that brand new, like, like we're blessed enough. Jen got a new car yesterday. How do you know in like, come on, clap now in a few years, it's going to be a rust bucket. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's just, that's just life. It's just struggle, recovery, struggle, recovery. And I think that God has it planned that way, but there is another option. And that option would look like this. Struggle, medicate. Struggle, medicate struggle medicate. And what I mean by that is this, is that instead of dealing with our struggles or addressing our struggles, we just do something to make us feel better temporarily and we medicate the situation, right? Come on. Can we be honest for just a few minutes with each other and with ourselves? And we medicate in all kinds of interesting ways. Like we go shopping or we eat chocolate, right? I mean, we, we, we talk about ways we medicate, drugs, alcohol, sex, these kind of things, but most of us are not dealing with big addictive stuff. Most of us, it's just like we have a Starbucks issue. <laughs> right? Christina's helping me carry in the stuff this morning and she had her Starbucks that she probably paid $4,000 for and she put it in her mouth and I was carrying the thing and the top gave and it went all over the floor in the hallway here. And all dad could think was, dang, that's a lot of money on the floor, <laughs> right? But, 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 but the, the reality that we're in this life and that it's healthy for us every once in a while to address struggles and then say, but how do we overcome? Because Jesus' word promises, he doesn't say that you're conquerors. Come on, somebody. He says you're more than conquerors, amen? Like, like we are meant to overcome. We are meant to, it doesn't mean that we're meant to get to a place where we never have struggles. It's just that we become struggle experts. Does that make sense? Right? That, that, that we come to this place. And so I want to talk through for the next four weeks, we're going to talk about how do we deal with struggles? And, and, and my goal, what I've been praying, and I will continue to pray for you for the next four weeks, is that God is going to actually bring some breakthrough in some of your lives. In, in, in certain areas, in, in certain places where maybe there's a continual struggle that for the first time ever, you're gonna hear something a little bit different. 
You're gonna understand some things that you need to do and step into that the Holy Spirit can work with you and bring freedom. Does anybody would like a little bit of freedom? Amen, right? That's, that's, that's our goal. So let's start off with, with this verse and I'm gonna read this out of the message. It's Hebrews 12 and two. For those of you who don't know, Sometimes we in the church like expect everybody to understand. God bless you. Um, we expect everybody to have a, um, Andrea can sneeze. That girl can sneeze now, right? I just called her out. Now she's all red. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sorry. But no, but, but in the Bible, sometimes you'll see there are different versions of the Bible because the Bible was written in another language. It was not written in English, right? It was written in other languages and it was translated. And so our translations are different. When I'm reading from the message and the message is sort of different. It's not one that I would suggest you study. It's a paraphrase of the translation. So it's just to give us the idea behind the scripture. So I wanna read Hebrews 12 and two, it says this. Keep your eyes on Jesus. So we're talking about struggles. We're in the mindset of thinking about our struggles. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished the race we're in. That's a great thing that I think we forget when we talk about remembering who he was and taking communion, is that he did what you've done, what you're doing. Like he felt what you're feeling, you know? Like there was probably some, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but I wonder if Jesus ever needed some aloe because he got a sunburn. You ever thought about that? Like you ever thought about really Jesus was that human? Like he, he lived what you live. He had the same frustrations. He had the same emotions, right? He had the same temptations and all of those things. So we keep our eyes on him who began and finished the race we're in. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, the cross, oh my gosh, right? That he would put up with the cross, with shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. If there was ever a time that I can think of Jesus struggling, it would obviously be the cross, right? Right, like that had to be the worst day of his earthly life, but by far. As, as they beat him and mocked him and put the crown of thorns on him and, and he, he went through all that scenario. But something stuck out to me that the Holy Spirit kind of brought to my attention over the last couple weeks. So Jesus is, is hanging on the cross and pretty much everything's been completed, right? Like all the prophecies that are supposed to happen and the things that are supposed to go down, everything has gone down and now he's hanging there on the cross. And I mean, I can't fathom the, the pain. I can't fathom, you know what I mean? I, I'm, come on somebody, I'm a sissy. Get a little raspberry and you're like, <laughs> right? And I mean, he's, you know what I'm talking, like his, the pain level and the struggle he's in. And then there's this moment that the Holy Spirit accented for me this week. There's this moment when he's, he's got everything done. It's recorded in John 9, 28. It says this, later, knowing that all was not completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said this, catch this, I am thirsty. And it hit me the humanity of that moment. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like here's the creator of the universe who could just say water and it would drop into his mouth. Like he had all power and there's this moment of humanity. Why, why would he do this? And Jesus was constantly doing things to give you and I an example of what we should live like. Right, like he, the, the whole reason that God rested on the seventh day was not because he needed a nap. Come on somebody, it's because he was giving us an example of Sabbath. And so I'm thinking in this moment, I'm looking and I'm saying, on his worst day, the example that Jesus gives us is, hey, don't be afraid to say where your needs are. Don't be afraid to be real. Don't be afraid to be transparent. I'm, I'm thirsty. What an amazing, amazing moment. No human is strong enough or self-sufficient enough to make it through a bad day alone or without asking for help. So here's what I think that Jesus kind of would say to us and what he's saying in that moment. This is, this is kind of, be human enough to acknowledge your need which is the exact opposite, come on, 
of what we're being told most of the time every day. Right? Be the man. Don't let anybody see you cry. You know, you got this. And now we have this amazing tool to help us create the facade that we call social media. <laughs> right? I'm gonna put on filters. I, 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 I'm gonna create this, this, this false, why? Why do we do that? Well, then I wanna compare to you, Adam. So let's, let's compare for a moment. Here's Jesus saying, don't be afraid to say, look, I have a need, be, be human. But let me, let me show you the response of Adam, because Adam and Eve are in the garden. And, and they've just eaten what they were not supposed to eat, right? God told them not to do it. And they run off. And God, it says that God, and, and I love this picture, God comes looking for them. <laughs> if any of you have ever had kids, you remember looking for the one-year-old, you know, the one that's sitting right there. And you're going, oh, where's Johnny? You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's what I picture God like. You know what I'm talking about? Because like nobody's hiding from God. He knows everything. He knows all things. But he kind of plays the game because our God is so patient with us even when we're acting like goober heads, right? And so here he comes looking for Adam and he says, Adam, and he find, finds him and he says, why were you hiding? In Genesis 3.10, Adam says this and he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And I thought, there's the contrast. The contrast of what you and I do when we're in struggle or when we have pain or when we have mistakes is what we do is we feel exposed. It says they were naked, right? We, we feel exposed in that moment and we're like, man, I wonder if anybody's looking. So Jen and I went mountain biking not that long ago over to the trail in Mount Dora. If you hadn't been there, it's a great trail. But they got this blue trail that's like, not appropriate for 50 year olds, right? But apparently appropriate to 50 year olds that think they're 25. So I went on this trail and it's got this big, huge wooden bank one way, big wooden bank the other way. I mean, like it's a little insane to be quite honest. So Mike's like, I got this. So I went and when I came up this one, I killed it. I'm like, yes, I came up this other side. And when I came down, my front tire hit soft sand. And I scorpioned, I felt the bottom of my shoe Tap me on top of the head. Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? And what was the first thing I did? Is anybody here? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> so Jen came around the corner. I was like, woo, that was a good one. Right? Because listen, there's something inside of us when we make a mistake, when we blow it, when we fail, when we're having struggles that we feel exposed. Right? And then what does it say? It says then he was afraid we're fearful, like I don't wanna look bad, I don't want anybody, come on, right? And then we hide it, and what do we do? We pretend. Like that's, that's the pattern that the enemy loves to keep us in. That is our sinful nature, trying to look good, trying to make sure that it's, all, it's, it's why now that you know, we have filters on social media, come on. Because I, I, I want to hide from, and I want to I pretend. It's why, like, somebody told me not that long ago, I, I was doing something on social media, and, and they were like, Pastor Mike, you got to hold the camera up. You got to get a down shot. It looks better with a down shot, duh. And I don't know this, but it was funny because I'm laughing because I'm thinking, we do that. Like, we do this whole thing trying to, and listen to me, we've got to be careful because what we're doing is we're finding ourselves in this place where we're, we're, we're reacting more like Adam did. And we can get trapped in our fear, and we take on, listen, pretend versions of ourselves. That's, that's not who God's created us to be. Matter of fact, you see it in our greetings. So we have all these little sayings we love when we greet people, right? How you doing? Oh, I am blessed and highly favored. No, you're not. No, you're not. You about to file bankruptcy. What are you talking about? Right, like, but we say these kind of things, like I wrote down a whole bunch of them that I've heard over the years being in the South. Some of y'all might've heard some of these. So how you doing? Oh, I'm fine as frog's hair. You ever heard that one? Fine as frog's hair. That's one, of, that's one of my wife's favorites. Here's this one. How are you doing? Oh, if I was any better, I'd be twins. <laughs> Never heard that one? That was a really good one. Or oh, how about this? How you doing? Can't complain because nobody would listen. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, some of y'all use that one. Bunch of nodding heads on that one. This one, um, I don't know. This one's kind of interesting. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> Got a sissy crowd today. All right. How, how, how are you doing? Oh, this, this is my absolute favorite. I'm chilling like a villain on penicillin. Okay, Eminem, <laughs> Tupac, that's a cute little rhyme. I'm not really sure why convicts are taking antibiotics. That's a whole nother sermon. But anyway, <laughs> listen, we all need to follow Jesus' example of being transparent. Like that's, listen to me, that's where healing is gonna come, right? But why don't we do that? Well, let's talk about a little bit of our fear setting in. Next week, we're gonna talk specifically about fear. But I wanna talk about roadblocks that we have to being transparent, number one. It's simply just the fear of being hurt. Come on, somebody, right? Just that fear of being hurt. Like we all have that feeling. We're all damaged a little bit. We all have relationships with hurt. We've all been heartbroken, come on. Maybe some of my young people, you hadn't been there yet, it's coming. Thanks, Pastor Mike, for the encouragement. Listen, you've been heartbroken. You've had your feelings hurt. How many of you guys have a family member that their spiritual gift is to hurt your feelings? Come on. <laughs> right? I mean, like, like we, we, we hurt each other, right? Um, for those people, their homegoing celebration is going to be a celebration. Anyway, I shouldn't have said that. Um, but listen to me. Because of your hurts and our lack of transparency, we say something like this. We don't say this, but this is what we're doing. How you doing? I'm good, but I'm gonna keep you right there so I don't get hurt, right? And, and, and I need you to hear something. That's a place the enemy would love to keep you. That's a place the enemy would love to keep you. Distant walls, protect myself, keep my cool, all those things. Look at Psalm 32 and three. When I kept it all inside, my bones turned to powder. And you keep it all in. Some of you are there today. I'm talking to somebody right now. I know I am. That you're holding some stuff inside of you and it's eating you up, right? Your bones turned to powder. What does that mean? It means I don't have a backbone anymore, right? I, I, I become fluid to my situations. My words become day-long groans. You ever get around somebody whose spiritual gift is to complain? Right? Or, or we might call it complain attainment. They entertain themselves by complaining. Right? Complain attainment. Right? And that's what happens when we hold this in is it just becomes day-long groans. The pressure never lets up. All the juices of my life are dried up. Some of you feel a little dry today. And this is why. Because you're trying to do it all alone. And then I let it all out, I said, and I'll make a clean breast of my failures to God. And suddenly the pressure was gone. All right? That's... That's find freedom. That's, that's what we're looking for is, is freedom for you. Another fear is the fear of being rejected. Come on, everybody. Anybody ever fear being rejected? Yes, everybody in this room and anybody watching online. That every one of us, we want to be liked. And do you know how we fight rejection? By doing whatever it takes to be accepted. Right? Like this, this is what happens where we get into certain situations and well, I'm, I'm fearful of, and there's a young man I've been talking to lately and, and uh, it's been interesting the journey he's on right now because he's decided to come back and, re and renew his relationship with God and he's on this journey, but he told me he is working at a place that's really, really dark, right? And everyone around them, it is just sucking him towards things that he shouldn't do and doesn't want to do. And he's like, I, you know, I got to get out of this situation because it's, it's drawn me to that place. But how long, how long can we stand in a place where we're being asked to do something we shouldn't and stand in that because we fear rejection, right? right? And, so, and so we end up giving in and we end up becoming part of. So we've said it this way a million times. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Like eventually the people that are around you are going to define you. We don't like that because we think we're bigger than that. But listen to me, we're not. They will come to a place where they affect the way we think and the things that we do and what we accept and what we don't. Look at John 12 and 43. 
for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. That is a verse that I double dog dare you to really get into personally. And what I mean by that is Holy Spirit, am I more interested in the praise of people or your praise? Because I promise you on a daily basis, you have the opportunity to live in such a way where you can only get one. You can't get both, right? You, 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 you're going to have to come to a point where you decide the direction you go. And what am I dealing with? I'm dealing with rejection. I'm dealing with the issue of rejection. Look at Psalm 139, I love, Paul writes this. He says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. I love it, because Paul says here, I am all that and a bag of chips. Mm. That's what he says. That's my translation, but that's what he says. And some of y'all need to hear that this morning. You are all that and a bag of chips. And you're like, uh, maybe them, but not me. And I need to remind you of something we read just a few weeks ago, that before you were formed in your mother's womb, he had an idea of who you were and designed you to be who you are. So before you start looking in the mirror and calling God's creation junk, come on. No, God doesn't make junk. God makes purposeful things to be used for his purposes in this time. And if you let this world tell you what is or isn't right, you will never be right here. Are you hearing me? It is only God's word that can define who you are. It is only the creator of the universe that can say yes or no, good or bad. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It is only for God's praise. The last fear is just that fear of being exposed. Come on. If they knew, what would they think? I get that one all the time when I invite people to come to church, right? You ever heard the one, you invite somebody to come to church? If I came to church, the walls would cave in. Like, if I had a dollar for every time that was, we could build church, new churches for all the churches in Leesburg, right? And in this, in this thought of, but if people knew, and the enemy says this to you, this is the little thing he whispers. They'll leave you if they know. They'll leave you if, if they know, if they really know the story, if they really know the background. Let's try this. Look at somebody next to you. Look at somebody next to you. Go ahead. Look at somebody next to you. Don't they look nice? They look good this morning. They're probably smiling, right? They look good this morning. Hey, guess what? They are so jacked up. They're so jacked up. You have no idea. Now, look at somebody else. And see, you knew they were jacked up because you looked at them second. Come on. I do that just to get a little laugh and have a moment to laugh, but I want to say this to you. You are jacked up and you're in great company. Because every one of us here has struggles and hurts and these same fears and fears of rejection, right? And wanting to be acceptance. And the enemy would love for you to believe that you are the only one that is messed up. And that is not true. That's not true. That's not true. In this room, there are people that have committed adultery. In this room, there are people that have a rap sheet. In this room, there are people that were prostitutes. There are people who were drug dealers. There were people who were addicts. There are people who are still dealing with addictions. There, I mean, I could go through the list. Listen to me. This is not a museum. The church is not a museum to holiness. Are you hearing me? The church is a hospital, right? Where we all come and get on a little Jesus antibiotics. Come on, somebody. And the rest of us... We just been on the antibiotics just a little bit longer than you. That's it. So the church has to choose to look at it that way. If you ask the average person out in our culture today about church, you're going to hear one word first almost every time. And what is it? Judgmental. Hypocrites. Why? Because when somebody walks in, they feel looked up and down. 
right? When somebody walks in and they're all tatted up or they got piercings or they got this certain hairstyle or they got droopy drawers or whatever it is, come on. Then immediately we're like, mm, right? I know the old people are struggling right now with a ripped jeans thing. <laughs> come on, don't lie. You know. I'm gonna call her out. Miss Marlene said to one of my daughters the other day, if it was really getting that bad, you should have called me. I'd have bought you some new jeans. <laughs> but listen to me. We have to create a safe place. Come on, somebody. In other words, we need to create a place where it's okay to not be okay. Yes? Where it's okay. Like, we don't want you to stay there. <laughs> right? Like, I don't want you to keep running around that same mountain because that mountain stinks, right? But the reality is it's okay to be okay now. How do we step forward? Second Corinthians 4 and 2, we refuse to wear masks and play games. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in the open the whole truth on display so that those who want to can see. Yeah, but Pastor Mike, that's crazy because people can post it on social media and they can talk about you. Listen to me. Listen to me, do you trust God? Do you trust God? People are gonna talk. If you don't have anybody talking about you, you ain't doing nothing. And if we are God's people called to do something amazing and miraculous and to see God move and to bring revival, come on. Man, we start talking about revival, people are, whoa, yeah, revival. But now I'm gonna talk about being transparent. You're like, mm, they can do that. <laughs> right? Come on, this, this one, this one's heavy. This one, this one's, this one's, it, it, it's, it's a lot because it steps into some really core fears inside of us. But first John one and seven, but if we walk in the light, what does the light do? It exposes everything, right? Why do all the crazy wacky things happen at night? Because you can hide in shadows, right? Listen, but if we walk in the light and he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, real relationship. Asking for help is not weakness. It's Jesus-like. I'm thirsty. Are you hearing me? It's not weakness. That is the, the, that is the, the example that, that our Savior gave us as he hung on the cross in his biggest struggle is to say, here's my humanity and here's where I'm struggling. So I'm gonna give you four ideas as we close out today's teaching. I always try to give you something practical, right? Try to give you a concept, then try to give you something you can put into play tomorrow morning, this afternoon, okay? I'm gonna give you four points, practical ideas of how we can work towards being a little bit more transparent, which is really scary, admittedly, yes. Extremely scary um, for a lot of us. But how do we be transparent? Number one. You need to establish a crew or a squad or a group. Oh, wait a minute. This week starts small groups. Imagine that, right? You, you need to establish a crew. There's a reason. Now, I'm going to date myself here so the young people are going to look at me funny. Does anybody remember the TV show Cheers? Right? There is a reason that that show was so immensely popular. Right? Everybody wants to go where? Everybody? Thank you very much. Norm! Right? That is the concept that we're talking about here. So can I say this to you? When did the bars become more friendly than the churches? Because they are. I'll dare, I'll dare say that's true still today, right now. Like, I bet I could go over to Frank's and pop up at the bar, and it wouldn't matter what I had on or what I looked like. Some goober head with a drink in his hand would go, so, what's going on, man? Right? And wanna hear my story? Listen, do you hear that? Like, when do, and the reason that that show was so popular, because it was a place to belong, right? It was a place to sit and, and to hang out together and to get to know, each, and they dogged each other, and they had fights, and they did, it ran like a house. You know why most people are sitting in bars? It's because their house is not as healthy as it should be. So I'm not getting in the house or in the church or in my other atmosphere. So if I go sit here, I can medicate and get acceptance all at the same time. Are you hearing me? 
right? Ephesians 2 and 20, together, we are his house, built on the firm foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. The, the, um, I told you it was written in a different language. The, the picture, word picture here that's going on in the original language is like door hinges. You know door hinges, this one's sitting on the door and this one's uh, on the thing, and you put it like this and then the pin goes down through, you know what I'm talking about? That's the, that's the word picture here. It's when that pin goes down through, there's stability, right? Stability happens when you find a place or have a place where you can be real and goofy. Come on. And still loved and accepted. Where you can be your real wacko self. Some of y'all crazy. Don't be pointing at your wife. I saw that. Right? But listen to me, that's okay. Like we, we have to create a place, we have to create a church with this mentality. We have to create small groups and you need, you need a crew, you need a small group. You need a place where you can talk about your struggles and you can encourage each other to keep going. So let me say two words to you. Small groups, small groups, small groups, small groups, small groups, small groups. Hey, guess what's starting this week? You need a small group. Listen to me, that is not because that like makes our church better, that doesn't like make money for the church. Listen, come on, some, why, why would we push it so much? Because you need it. You have to have, it kind of hurts my feelings to say this, but you don't get everything you need from a Sunday morning. You don't. You're not gonna get everything you need by listening to this goofy man talk this morning. You have to be in some relationships. You need to be in some relationships that agitate you. Right? You need to be in some relationships that they get on your nerves a little bit. Why? Well, because that's when growth comes. Come on. You need to be somewhere where you think, oh, I'll spank their kids for them. <laughs> Welcome to Walmart. Can I help you? No, but <laughs> listen, like we need that. And we, for whatever reason, have decided to avoid it. And it's, I think, a scheme of the enemy. Right? It's a scheme of the enemy to get us out of relationship and go, oh, I'm good. I don't want to deal with that. And I don't want to sit around it. Come on. And men, we're the worst. I'm going to call us out. We're the worst. Because when I say small group, all the men were like, I'm not sitting in a circle and singing Kumbaya. Okay, well, then don't sit in a circle and sing Kumbaya. Sit in a circle and talk about football. I don't care, but you need a circle. Because when that secretary at work starts flirting with you, you need some guy that you're close enough to go, hey dude, this happened today and I liked it. Will you help me and pray with me and keep me accountable, right? Like we need a crew, we need people around us. Number two, practical thing that you need to do. You need to enact a growth plan. You need to enact a growth plan. It is God's will for you to grow, but hear me, you're not gonna like this, but hear me, you cannot grow alone. You can't. You think you can. You think if you just read enough books and you listen to enough podcasts and all that kind of stuff, but you know what the problem with that is? None of those can see your blind spots. See your blind spots. You have places where you just don't know what you don't know. And you need someone else in your life to go, hey, have you thought about this? And you go, oh, I didn't think about that. Right? Listen to me. There are a whole lot of people that God has placed in your life. Some of them are crazy. Anybody got crazy people in your life? Don't look at them, just ask him. Can I say this to you? Do you know why you have those crazy people in your life? to try to help you not be crazy. Listen to me, if you'll start looking at the people that God has put in your life and the people that are around you from the standpoint of God is trying to do something in me. One of my toughest personal relationships that I'm dealing with, 
I've come to a realization and I've prayed and it's been long lasting and it's been painful. And I'm trying to do the right thing and I'm trying to have the right attitude and I'm trying all these things. And what I finally came to an understanding is this person will do things and make me feel a certain way. And I'm hurt or angry or whatever. And what I finally understood because someone else helped me see it was the reason that you're so upset about the way that person makes you feel is because that's how you make other people feel. Like I gotta look in the mirror, right? And understand the way that I'm treating someone else or the words that I'm saying. The best way to grow in life is to get around people who have what you want. Come on, somebody. Some of you need to enact a growth plan by simply looking for people that you can, they can be mentors. So you're having a marriage struggle. Okay, look around and find a marriage that you go, wow, that's a marriage. So I'll buy them dinner and we'll go to dinner and I'm gonna hang around with them. I wanna see what they do and understand how they do and what they do. You're having parenting problems. Okay, invite a couple to dinner. And when their kids sit at the table and act properly and don't act a fool, get around those parents and figure out what the heck are they doing? Are you hearing me? Right? Like you need people. You need a growth plan. You need to be looking for people around you. Finances. Right? We're struggling with finances. Find somebody who's killing it. Find somebody who, you know, maybe they lost everything and now they've grown back. That's why we've got our entrepreneur small group, Verdon doing that. Like we've got Financial Peace University that Bethany's doing. Come on, somebody needs to sign up for Financial Peace University and do that. You need to get around some people and some people that have done things successfully financially and ask them to go to coffee. Have them pay because you're hurting. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Listen, get around some other people. The church is a body. For one part of the body to grow, it has to be connected to the rest. If I chop my hand off, what happens? The hand dies. The body keeps going, but the hand dies, right? You, you have to be connected. And I'm pushing against everything the world is telling you right now. You're too busy for a small group. Well, that's a scheduling issue and a time management issue because I'm not prioritizing things I need to prioritize, right? I, 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 I just want to do it on my own. I'm a man's man. My dad told me to take care of myself or I've got walls or I've been hurt. You don't understand what happened to me before. So I've got my wall. Listen, listen, listen. You're going to stay, I almost said Linda. But anyway, <laughs> you, <laughs> listen, Linda, I would hit that kid, y'all. I'm just telling you, anyway. Sorry, don't get around me if you wanna learn parenting. Anyway, but, 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 but in, in all seriousness, like for us to, we have to get around other people. You have to seek out. I, like I said, you need people who agitate you. You need people who think differently than you. Ephesians 4 and 16, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. There's some people around you right now, you have no idea spending time with them would change your life. It would. Give her a different way of thinking, different understanding, different ideas about how you might run your household or your life. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Band, you guys come on up. I'm gonna close out two more points and then we're gonna finish out worshiping today. Number three. Number three, you need to enlist an army. You need to enlist an army, all right? So enlist an army, to me, that's the church. You need the church. You need a church body, okay? For those of you who are visiting, welcome. We're glad you're here. We would love to have you go through our life steps, which the first one starts today, so come join me right after for 45 minutes. I won't keep you long. But you need to plant somewhere. If this is not the church for you, that's fine, but you need a church. You need to enlist an army of people around you. You're gonna need some support some days. You're gonna need protection other days. You will never be better alone. Never, never are you better alone. The church is a flock, Luke 12 and 32. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom, not an individual, the flock. Do you know Jesus is not coming back for Christians? It's actually biblical, it says he's coming back for his church. 
In other words, he's not looking at us as individuals, he's looking at us as a body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like we are interconnected, we have to be interconnected. The church is only as strong as the relationships within the church. The church is only as strong as our real and transparency with each other. That maybe we need a little bit thicker skin. Come on, anybody. Maybe we need to be able to take criticism a little bit better. Maybe we need to find people around us that would do it lovingly and kindly. Maybe we need to be those people first. Are you, is anybody hearing? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Like this is so, so important. The reason people serve on our dream team is not just to fulfill tasks that we need to do to have church. So like to be an usher and hand out guides or to greet people in the front or do coffee or do children's ministry. That's not why, you know why? Because it's army, it's connection, it's being a part. Listen to me, this is so important. And for some of you, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean this is not condemnation. If the Holy Spirit brings in conviction, that's him. But listen to me, sitting in these seats don't make you part of the church. Nobody's gonna notice if you're not here, if you only sit in these seats. They're gonna notice because you're in a small group and your small group people are gonna notice you're not here. Or they're gonna notice because you're, like that's, listen to me, you need to be around people. You need to be on a team, you need to be on the worship team where you rub each other raw a little bit. There's a little issues that happen. And we learn to deal with it and get over it and be godly about the way we deal with conflict resolution. Come on somebody, right? The fourth one is the hardest of all. It is the one that something in our jacked up self pushes away at the most. Our sinful nature that looks in the mirror and struggles with what we see. That looks at our past and our regrets and the enemy loves to whisper in your ears. That we look at our adult children and we think what if, or shoulda, coulda, woulda. And we look in our lives and we know we're pretending and we put on the masks. And number four is this, you have to embrace being loved. You have to embrace being loved. You have to actually understand. As jacked up as that first person you looked at is, and we know the second one's jacked up. The reason we're sitting here today is because we're all trying to figure out how to be a little bit more like Jesus. And how to love each other a little bit better. Are they gonna blow it? Of course they're gonna blow it, right? But you have to embrace, listen to me, that you're loved, that we love you. And here's the words of the enemy. Well, they won't love you if you take that mask off. They won't love you if you tell them about 10 years ago. They won't love you if they know who you really are. And so I wanna say these words with such intensity inside of me. This is a safe place. This is a safe place. I will physically, violently protect this being a safe place. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We have to create a place. And I can't do it, I'm, I'm one person. You have to do it, right? Where we make this safe for each other. And we make our small groups safe for each other. Because freedom will come when somebody feels safe and they're transparent enough to maybe be human enough and raise their hand today and say, you know what? I, I just wanna be loved. I just wanna be loved, that's Mike. I just wanna be loved. Anybody else? I just wanna be loved, right? That we create that type of scenario by dealing with our own hurts and failures and regrets and struggles. Ephesians 2 and 19, you are a member of God's very own family and you belong to God's household with every other Christian. So let me close out today with, with this, 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 this thing. 
I can be me when I'm connected to those who believe in me. I can be me when I'm connected to those who believe in me. So church, listen to me. We've got to create that safe place. We've got to get into small groups where we get a little bit vulnerable, right? And we deal with our stuff a little bit. And if and when you do, listen to me, God will do miraculous things in your life. Are you you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Can you commit to that today? Can we commit to that as a church? As best as we know how, to creating a safe place, to creating a a loving place. I'm gonna pick on somebody. They didn't even know I was gonna pick on them. She's gonna get mad at me, but that's okay. So Savannah came and sang with us for the first time. And... And so I said, I said to Marcus after practice, I said, so how'd it go? How did Savannah do as her first time? And he said, she's kind of goofy. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because Savannah's got this kind of intense face, right? Like, and he's like, yeah, like her and Alex just like started all being all goofy together, right? Listen to me, I loved it. That's, not a, that's, a, that's a, exactly what we're talking about. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That, that she would feel comfortable enough on her first night at rehearsal being goofy and being listen we all are goofy we all have warts we all have scars church when do we be like Jesus and say I'm thirsty I got stuff I'm gonna love you I don't want to leave you where you are I know God's got better for you but I'll take you where you are right now and we'll go on this journey together amen and for those of you here today and this would be the first time like you're hearing God kind of like this or a church talk like this. You're welcome here and you're loved here. And you have a God in the universe who loves you no matter what you've done and where you are. And he would love to have a relationship with you. He would love for you to have a moment where you just say, you know what, I give you my life. I don't completely understand it, but I'll surrender my life to Jesus today. And if you do that, he gives you a new life and a new family and a new understanding of why you were created and the purpose you're here on this earth for. Amen? And so if that's you today, I'm gonna say a prayer in just a moment, give you an opportunity to pray that prayer. But for the rest of us, I'm gonna pray God helps us be more transparent, more real, amen? That, 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 That we would understand that that's who God's created us to be. It's scary, would you agree? Come on now, let's be real for a second. It's scary to do that. But I know if we do it, I know if we'll get real, that God will use it in a way that'll just be absolutely miraculous. So let's pray and ask God to help us do that today. Father, thank you for your word, man. And I admit, myself, I, we play games. We, we like likes on social media. We, we like for people to respond to us. And, Sometimes though, God, we know we want praise from men more than we want from you. Will you forgive us of that? Would you help us today to be a little more real and a little more transparent? Would you help us to step out, even though we're scared, even though it feels uncomfortable and awkward, to build relationships that can help us grow and find freedom. And for those today that needed to pray that prayer, You can pray something simple like this. Jesus, today, I give you my heart. I give you my entire life. I thank you that you forgive me of all my sins. And with your help, I'm gonna serve you as best as I can understand for the rest of my life today. We pray all these prayers, all of them in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. So... We're going to close out today with a little worship. Can we do that? Stand to your feet and let's think about our big God as we close out today.
be blessed. And may the favor of God follow you.